Jerome Harris is a graphic designer, educator, and curator, currently design director at Civic Nation. He's joining us this evening to discuss his recent design of a dual-sided publication of non-linear storytelling by artist Jonathan Linden Chase. Published by Capricious, the book illustrates black queer bodies moving through flowing states of love, grief, and desire. Um, Jerome, if I could ask you to turn on your audio and video as well, um, so we can say hello. Hello. Hi there. How are you? All right. Thanks very doing, much. Matt? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thanks. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit rainy here, but you know, can't complain. <laughs> Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, we're super happy to have you. Thanks so much for joining us at Nice Tuesdays Online. Um, I'm going to let you take it away now because I think you've got an amazing um, publication to show us. So um, why don't you start sharing your screen and um, everyone else watching, if you have any questions, again, put them in the chat and um, I'll try and uh, ask Jerome afterwards. Um, but yeah, here we go. This is the, the desktop. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it, Jerome. All right. Can everybody, can you guys hear me? Okay. You guys can see. Okay, great. Um, so I'm Jerome Harris. This is, uh, it's nice that thank you for inviting me out to talk. Nice Tuesdays on this day. I like MMXX better than 2020. Um, I usually give my bio in the places that I live because it's, uh, like a, just a mnemonic device. Um, I am, I was born and raised in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, studied advertising at Temple University in Philadelphia, um, moved to Brooklyn. I was a professional dancer for three years. Uh, I didn't want to do advertising after I graduated. I wanted to pursue my dream of dance. Um, I was there for three years. Um, I moved back to Philadelphia. I was a teaching artist in the public school system for a while, just teaching dance to um, elementary through high school kids for a while. Um, ended up wanting to switch gears back to graphic design. And I didn't mention that I was doing graphic design this whole time, mostly party flyers. So four by six, like glossy um, party flyers for gay nightlife and um, hip hop parties, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I ended up applying to um, grad school, got into Yale's MFA program, was there, finished in 2016. Um, after that, I was a teaching fellow at Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. Um, I was there for two years. And um, I, after that, I moved to, back to New York, <laughs> back to Brooklyn, um, to take a job at Housing Works um, as a design director. And I'm currently in Richmond, Virginia, but not for work just because rent is cheap and um, New York was not the most pleasant place to be living and working from home in a pandemic. Um, in addition to graphic design, I, I've, you know, I try to keep up my dancing. I'm 35 now and I need to do something to keep these old, <laughs> old bones from getting rusty. So um, I teach uh, really short pieces of choreography online and send them to my friends or whoever else wants to learn. And we do this. So it's at 32 counts on Instagram. Um, I'm also a DJ. I go by DJ Glenn Coco. If you know, you know. Um, I can't DJ right now, but uh, if you want a custom mix, hit me up. I've been doing that. Um, so that's at DJ Glenn Coco. I just started that Instagram. I probably have like five followers. So you guys can help me out. And then uh, last but not least, my uh, I think this is maybe the project that has made me most the most visible. Um, is my research into 20th century African American graphic designers. Um, and it's been an exhibition that's been touring for two years now. Um, what we're looking at here is documentation from the show at the Jacob Lawrence Gallery at University of Washington in Seattle. Um, and yeah, this is the, I think it's going on its 18th tour stop that will be at Boston University. Um, this fall, let's continue. So I'm a graphic designer. I'm just gonna show a little bit of my work and then I'm gonna focus on my the book design with Jonathan Linden Chase. Um, so this is just some stuff I made when I was at Housing Works. The, the best thing about this job was that I was making work that was like directly impacting the communities that needed it. So um the people holding up the everyone together the end to end aid signs um 
those that was at an AIDS conference. Um, the Justice for um, for Black Lives is a protest sign. We actually used that protest um, to fund the NYPD was after, you know, police brutality. And we actually posted this on our social media. Also, we were doing COVID-19 testing. And at the same time, like, of course, just like um, giving out low cross and free prep to um, people having sex and want to protect themselves from HIV. Um, and this is just another protest sign. Like, it's just, it just, this is the kind of work I believe in. Um, I try to avoid doing any work that I feel ambivalent about. I just try, I want to feel 100 about every, everything that I make. Um, this is just the graphic design work that I worked on for As Not For for my exhibition. Um, it was a language I had been slowly working on for years. And just, I think, if anything, just that feeling of urgency. Um, and the thing to feel like uh, not to mold over um, is was a really important energy for me to uh, convey. And so, yeah, I'll say that. And here's just some uh, documentation of the show itself. This is at Ohio University earlier this year. And then this is in um, Belgium for the Fig Leach Festival. Shout out to Lorraine Footer. I think I said your last name right. Um, and I thought this was really cool because they did the poster in French and English. That's, I, I thought that was, I thought that was amazing. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to talk about more recently, more, most recent, uh, more recent freelance projects. Um, I've been doing a lot of books. So this was, um, talking to the sun at fire Island, which I did with Bafo, uh, which is an art kind of arts and social space curating nonprofit in New York, but they do an arts residency on um, Fire Island every year and invite kind of like queer um, LGBTQ people out um, to make art. And so this is just a book documenting the process. And this was uh, an amazingly fun design project. Um, the, the executive director just let me have my way. <laughs> and I was like, okay, if I'm gonna make a book, I'm gonna make it my way. I really, the collage is my, actually my favorite thing, my favorite spread in the entire book um, of just like a pool party. It's just, anyway, let's keep going. Um, this book I worked on with uh, Russ Jackson. Um, they're actually a graphic designer at Housing Works Now. Um, and it was published by um, Af Afro Publishing in Baltimore. Um, it's called To the Front, Black Women in the Vote. So it's about Black uh, suffragettes and Black women's um, impact on voting in the United States. Um, yeah, here's some spreads. Uh, yeah. And then this is the book I'm going to talk a little bit more extensively about. This is uh, two books, Wild, Wild, Wild West and Haunting of the Seahorse. Um, and it acts as like a intersection of multiple types of uh, multiple types of books. It's a little bit of a artist monograph. It's a science fiction story, and it's two stories that kind of one about desire and one about mourning that kind of um, meet in the middle. Um, and so you get the full range of emotions through every single piece of artwork. Also, there are like full paintings. Um, there's also just like sketches on napkins and all none of it was really was digitally typeset. I was literally taking scraps of paper that the artist had handwritten on and just kind of like typesetting <laughs> manually, which was which was a lot of fun and tedious. Um, so as you can see here, like as like when you go to read the book, it's a lot of handwriting and um, I really, this process was dope because I actually got to take a step back. I was handed literally two, three ring binders of images that needed to be scanned and edited. And then I had to decide how, how am I gonna make, allow, uh, make this clear for people to read um, from like pieces of construction paper with, with handwriting on it. So um, yeah, it was a pretty <laughs> intense project. So here's just a, uh, little video of the book. Um, it's uh, the morning book is on matte paper and the kind of science fiction stories on glossy paper. So we wanted to do something that felt kind of like somber and then 
futuristic and kind of, you know, it was a fun thing. Um, um, and I'll talk a little bit about Jonathan. Um, Jonathan is a Philadelphia based artist. Um, their work deals with uh, black queer bodies just in mundane spaces. Um, I came across Jonathan's work um, at Ulysses Bookstore in Philadelphia. Um, they had put out a book of their work and, and I completely lost my mind. I was going through it. I, as a gay man myself, I had never seen just like people doing, people just, just black men being tender in these like really abstracted paintings um, in that way. And, it, and it, it just struck me. Anyway, I messaged him on Facebook and um, <laughs> and I was like, I love your work. Like we have to, we have to hang out. So we ended up adding each other on the PlayStation Network and playing Mortal Kombat and video games together. And then um, just last year, um, we got the opportunity to work on this book together. Um, and this is just my favorite spread from the book. We we both love Missy Elliott. Um, and yeah. And this is just some. Um, some spreads from the book. Um, it's published by Capricious Publishing. You guys can go out and get it. Um, yeah. I don't, don't want to tell you the story because I don't want to. I don't, don't want to ruin the uh, experience. But it's a pretty fun, pretty fun read and book experience. So that's me, that's my Instagram, Jonathan's Instagram, Instagram Capricious Publishing, and Annika, who is the executive director of the organization. All right, thank you. Amazing, thanks so much, Jerome. Um, you can, yeah, stop sharing now, but um, thank you for that. That was absolutely brilliant, um, so interesting. We've had loads of questions coming in um, from, from the audience. So um, I guess, first of all, uh, the first one comes from Olivia. How did returning to university um, after being in the working world help you find your direction? Was your experience worth it? I think she's kind of considering a similar move. I'm sorry, Matt, you broke up a little bit there. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, it's just uh, the first question comes from Olivia. So she says, um, how did returning to university after being in the working world help you find your direction? Um, was your experience worth it? And yeah, I think she's kind of considering a similar move for herself. Okay, so I... Um... I wasn't working as a designer like I was doing party flyers and hustling like I, I was trying to I was designing to pay the rent but it also gave me a very long time to experiment and and just fuck around and do whatever I wanted um so I was able to come up with the visual language but after going to graduate school with kind of like a self-taught portfolio I really got to nail down like finer toy finer points of typography um applying theory coming up with like a personal design philosophy um, and really being able to pull references, do visual research, things like this. So I won't, I'm, I'm not going to say grad school made me a better designer, made me a better thinker and a better design thinker. Um, and thus, you, I have a, it streamlined my process and helped me figure out who I wanted to be as a designer. Okay, amazing. Um, second question comes from Dana. Um, could you talk about how you draw inspiration from dance, if you do at all? And if having a dance background helped you be a better designer? Really interesting I question. Know. I don't. They're two <laughs> different things. It doesn't work. My, I tried to make my thesis in grad school about dance and design. Doesn't work. It just it, <laughs> dance is more enough. like sculpture. Dance is more like sculpture. It's not. You can't. Graphic design is flat. You can't do it. <laughs> Fair enough. I thought it was pretty clear um, for data there. Um, I think you've kind of touched on uh, one of these questions, but I guess um, a final question for you. Do you have some advice you can give to an art major who's about to graduate and feels a little lost with what to do after graduation? I guess there's a lot of people in this situation, particularly in 2020, you know, it, it's a difficult time to be graduating. Um, but yeah, any advice for someone just graduating an art major? I think, I, I, I mean, I would say step back and don't think about the work and think about who you are. Like, I think you have to know yourself and have kind of a personal manifesto, what you believe in, what you are gonna take, what you're not gonna take. Uh, for example, like uh, and just like for this talk, I was asked to talk about as not for, but just in the in the racial climate right now, I don't want to talk about race. It's exhausting for people of color to have to be the mascots for for their people. And so I just wanted to talk about something more imaginative 
and work that I actually believe in and actually reflects my practice as opposed to being that being projected onto me. Right. So that's like a part of my personal philosophy. So I would just say, but like, fuck the work. <laughs> think about yourself, like center yourself. And then I think that the, the honest, you know, genuine and authentic work will come out of that. Amazing. Thank you, Jerome. Um, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much. Um, I'm going to ask you to turn your audio and video off again. But um, yeah, thank you. There's some seriously amazing advice there for anyone um, Yeah, starting out or kind of established in, in their career. Um, 